All right, let's get started today. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, this is Bountyfield's webinar, uh, One to Many, Unlocking Access to Post-Harvest Technology. My name is Stevie Klober. I'm the Communications and Marketing Manager for Bountyfield International. Uh, today's webinar is scheduled to be a one-hour program featuring two different panels. Our first uh, panel will be with program team and they're gonna share some insights of our Kenya program. And then our second will feature a couple of entrepreneurs that we have with us from the field. And a um, couple of just uh, uh, notes in terms of how this is gonna work. Uh, throughout the um, webinar, uh, there's a Q&A box. If you could put all of your questions into that box, that would be super helpful for us to keep that um, organized throughout. And then we'll have some time after both panels to get to some questions. And then you can also utilize the chat box. Um, and if you'd like, uh, make sure that you have that setting to everyone, if you'd like everyone to see your um, questions on there, um, then, uh, then everyone will be able to see that. Um, so a little bit about Bountafield. Uh, Bountafield is a post-harvest technology solutions provider for smallholder markets in sub-Saharan Africa, and we're working to bridge the gap between farmers and consumers. Uh, we are based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota in the United States. We have worked in countries all over the world, but most recently we've worked in Senegal, Malawi, and Kenya. We give priority to how we can help smallholders process, save, and sell more food. Uh, we prioritize partnerships with the private sector so that we can supply equipment and post-sale um, post support, as well as um, financing solutions. We are developing rural entrepreneurs as fee-for-service providers, uh, particularly working with women and youth as a way to build resilience and inclusive growth. Um, so like I said, today's webinar is entitled One to Many, Unlocking Access to Post-Harvest Technology in Africa. And during this hour, we're going to share results from our Mubunabora project in Kenya. Uh, this will talk, um, the panelists will talk about what we are seeing, which we think is quite promising. And um, we feel like we're learning a great deal from um, our program there. Uh, and Next, before we head into the first panel, I would like to introduce the vice chair of our board of directors, Bernard Van Lengrick. Bernard is the former chief science officer and VP for technical strategy at General Mills, where he led the development of key enabling technologies for 20 years. He was the lead food scientist on the Beyond Meat Burger that is now leading plant-based food product in markets across both North America and Europe. And he is also the founder of the Seeding the Future Foundation, whose mission is seeding and accelerating innovative, multidisciplinary and scalable approaches to create solutions that sustainably improve the food supply and reduce chronic hunger. Uh, the foundation and the Van Lengrick family have invested in Bountafield's Mavuna Bora pilot in Kenya as a lever for change, um, and Bountafield is grateful for this support. Um, so without further ado, uh, Bernard, uh, I would love to hand it off to you to say a few words. If you can unmute yourself. This is good now. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you now. All right. Well, thank you, Stevie, for the kind introduction. It's really glad to be here. Um, I'd, I'd like to share a few words about our core beliefs and our vision and mission of our foundation. Um, first, we believe that every human must have adequate access to safe and nutritious food. Uh, we believe that chronic hunger is unacceptable. And we believe that future generations must be able to live in a world that can sustainably provide healthy food for everyone. So accordingly, the vision of our foundation is a global food system that always provides equitable access to safe and nutritious food for everyone and improves the health of our planet by being sustainable, resilient, and regenerative. And our mission is to seed high-impact efforts and support organizations such as Bounty Field 
that drive change by applying science and technology solutions to sustainably improve our food supply and reduce chronic hunger. And with that also address extreme poverty. We are, we are truly honored to support Bountyfield International, which was founded, as many of you know, by com as com Compatible Technology International by George Ewing. Uh, George was a brilliant General Mills engineer who had a passion for designing simple post-harvest tools to support smallholder farmers in Africa. On my trips to Africa, I saw firsthand the great benefits that robust and simple post-harvest tools and technology can provide. And Bountyfield developed a simple hand-driven crop thresher for smallholder farmers in Senegal a few years ago. And it eliminated the long, treacherous and tedious work with mortar and pestle, it drastically reduced post-harvest losses, and it provided more food for the smallholder farmers and left some of to sell into the market. It was very moving to hear from farmer women that the increase in income provided enough means to buy school supplies for their children. And there was no more need to go to the bank to loan money for this. And using much less time for threshing also enabled farmer women to spend more time with their families and with each other. So you'll hear later from the panel uh, that we also learned that one thresher for one farmer is good, but from an economic perspective, it became clear that using one thresher for many farmers would be better. So a fee-for-service concept, leveraging small entrepreneurs could potentially enable a sustainable and flourishing business environment, and it would benefit farmers, entrepreneurs, uptakers, and all stakeholders along the value chain. So this one to many initiative is very much in line with the vision and mission of our foundation. And we are honored to have been able to support this project from the initial design phase throughout today and going forward. And it's great to see how the project has matured over the past two years from a very small pilot to an initiative with significant potential to be scaled and potentially having a transforming impact on national food systems in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. In closing my remarks, I'd like to express my sincere thanks and appreciation to the project team led by Nadia Martinez and Jeffrey Niamota for what they and their team have accomplished over the last two years under most difficult circumstances, such as COVID-related constraints, lockdowns, business shutdowns, and locust plague. We are very proud of the entire team. The project is on a really good path to success with an initial cohort of about 50 entrepreneurs, each reaching about between 100 and 200 farmers and creating a win-win situation by improving the income and quality of life of farmers, establishing small entrepreneurship opportunities and significantly reduce post-harvest losses. Again, a big thank you for the, to the entire Kenya team. We are so proud of you and so thankful for what you do. Thank you. Thank you, Bernard. We really appreciate you being with us today. All right, so next I am going to um, hand it over to Nadia Martinez to moderate our first panel. Uh, Nadia is serving as global team lead for Bountifield's Mavuno Bora project. She has extensive experience in agricultural development with an emphasis on business capacity and financing and she has lived and worked in Africa for the past 10 years. So let me bring you in here, Nadia, if you'd like to unmute, and then I'll let you introduce the next two panelists and I'll bring them in for you. Super, can you hear me okay? Yep. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, good morning everybody. And thank you Stevie for the introduction and thank you Bernard for um, your very inspiring words and your belief in Bounty Field. I'm so delighted to be here and really excited actually to be moderating this panel with two of my favorite people. Alexandra is a CEO of Bounty Field International. Many of you probably already know her. Her vision that transformational change requires looking beyond technological innovation to addressing the wider set of issues impacting post-harvest processes led to the development of this one-to-many business model that we'll be discussing today. Alexandra is an expert on global food and agricultural policy and a passionate advocate of women's economic empowerment. So I'm very happy to be talking to you today, Alexandra. And Jeffrey is a market system specialist. He's also an agriculturalist, horticulture, horticulture by, by trade, I think, by, by training. Um, and a team leader whose work over the last two decades has resulted 
in inclusive market-led initiatives that positively impact on the lives of smallholder farmers and rural communities. Besides his home country of Kenya, he has worked in multiple countries throughout Africa and also in Asia. And I've known Jeffrey for, I think, around 10 years now. Alexandra, let me start with you. Um, so I'm sure everyone is interested to know what the actual, what, what is the one-to-many approach? Why, why was Bounty Field interested in testing this business model and what is it? Thank you so much, Nadia. And it's such a pleasure to be here today and to be with you and Jeffrey on this panel. Um, let me just start by saying one-to-many really refers to, as Bernard um, mentioned, the fact that uh, one micro-entrepreneur or MSME can reach hundreds of farmers in a remote area who lack access to post-harvest tools and services, and as a result, struggle with food loss, low income, drudgery, all the things that we talk about. It embraces the fact that post-harvest technology, of course, is at the center um, of the solution, but um, moves away from just a, you know, a one-off kind of activity to something that uh, really can achieve much larger scale impact. This approach came out of our learnings over the years um, around technology adoption. Bounty Field has always sought to bring small scale equipment to farmers for processing staple crops in Africa. However, I would say uh, we lacked a business model to accompany the technology. And we were perhaps mired in trying to sell equipment to farmers, individual farmers, who, as many of you know, struggle on a good day to have enough money to meet their needs. We saw value in a market-led approach um, and certainly partnerships with the private sector, but didn't really quite understand the customer. And so we shifted to focus less directly on the farmer, but on the opportunity to equip, to equip post-harvest entrepreneurs or micro-entrepreneurs as fee-for-service providers um, directly to farmers. And we were able to then see that impact grow immediately. The one-to-many approach as we've defined it, um, of course, with, with your leadership and with, and with Jeffrey's leadership, to really prepare the framework and, the, and to pilot and to test and to, to collect data on this really includes an offering of three business pillars for each micro entrepreneur to be successful and allowing them really, if you will, to develop their own brand, their own reputation of excellence in their community. And we'll be talking about them, uh, Jeffrey will be saying more about them, but these three pillars include financing, uh, technology and business support. Uh, with this support, our goal is to see that these entrepreneurs, uh, again, can sustain their businesses over time in their communities, that there's an initial uh, uh, subsidy and uh, perhaps an intervention with Bounty Field, but that they themselves then take it forward as business leaders um, and, uh, and achieve that large scale impact across multiple indicators over time. So again, we work with the private sector, including equipment suppliers and food buyers. And we believe this approach helps to bridge that gap that's also in the African supply chain when it comes to post-harvest technology that's available, that's affordable, and that's accessible to, to smallholder uh, farmers. Yeah. Let me just stop there and hand it back over to you. Sure, that's great. Um, so uh, let's let's have Jeffrey maybe go a little bit more in detail about these pillars that you're talking about. So Jeffrey, you're the team leader in Kenya. You're really putting this project into action. You're seeing it grow uh, day by day. How does it actually work? What what are these three pillars about? How, how do you go about um, delivering them or uh, administering them? Uh, thanks, Nadia, for the introduction. Uh, and thanks, Alexandra, for that wonderful introduction, and of course, um, Bernhard for the wonderful uh, words. Um, so in brief, what I would like to say is um, as Mafuno Bora program uh, here in Kenya, um, just like um, um, Alexandra has explained, we have three pillars. And uh, the three pillars, one is technology, uh, which is like the center stage of uh, what, whatever we do on this program, the post-harvest technology. 
um, in this country, there are too many uh, technologies, but as Pontifield, we had to assess and determine the right tool for the products that we have in the field. And then of course, um, once we have identified the entrepreneur who is going to take the equipment, we take them through a process of understanding how the equipment works, how to safely use the equipment, and uh, more importantly, how to assemble it so that it's utilized to provide the service to the smallholders. Um, the other area I would like, to, so in that context, we have a technician who helps us to do that. And uh, beyond the technician, we also work with the suppliers, uh, technician to also help the same. Um, on another front, uh, these entrepreneurs who, sub, who serve these smallholder farmers uh, need uh, to have their business capacity enhanced. So we do assessments of uh, the, the, the entrepreneurs at the beginning to determine what gaps are there. And then through that, we develop what we call capacity development plans, which we now use to uh, fill in those specific gaps. And uh, as soon as we're able to do that, the entrepreneurs are actually able to go out there and uh, work with farmers. And in that context, we deal with uh, financial aspects and also business aspects, how to market their business to the neighboring farmers. And then of course, lastly, I think uh, Alexandra talked well, well about the financing bit. You know, most of the entrepreneurs we are talking of are in the rural community where access to finance is a real challenge. Uh, and so through this Mafunopora program, uh, working with our partners, we've been able to facilitate access to this financing for the equipment so that the entrepreneurs have this equipment, they use it uh, with um, the farmers in their villages. So I would have wanted to explain more, but because of time, mm -hmm. uh, I, I would want to stop it at that. Sure. I'm sure there'll be questions and that way then we can gear your responses more to what the audience is really interested in listening to. Don't forget, please to write your questions in the Q&A box or in the chat box, whichever one you hit first. Uh, my colleague Stevie will be, of course, monitoring that and we'll have an opportunity to answer your questions as soon as we can take a pause. So, but I want to continue with you, Jeffrey. So what I'm hearing you say, basically, it's um, you're essentially using technology, uh, as Bounty Field has this very long history of, but to build lots of small, impactful businesses. How are these businesses actually doing? Um, in terms of um, when you look at the enterprises uh, across the country, we are working in Western Kenya and we are working in Eastern Kenya, two different fronts. One rainforest is more or less reliable, another area rainfall not reliable. So when I look at uh, all each of these entrepreneurs, uh, there is any time they pick the equipment to go to the field to provide the service, they always make money. And uh, so what we've seen is um, uh, if, if an entrepreneur spends, mo the most ex expense they, they, they spend is on transport, on fuel, and um, yeah, transport fuel and paying the operator. And uh, in all these contexts, if they spend like 100 shillings of Kenya, on average, they would make 200. Uh, and so in that context, I can say the entrepreneurs, most of the ones that we are working with have done well. Um, beyond that, I would also want to say this way that we are talking of one to many. At the beginning last year, we only had 17 entrepreneurs to work with at the beginning. These ones were able to reach uh, a total of 4,369 farmers. When you look at that ratio, it's like we are talking of uh, one to about 257 uh, farmers. So you, as you can understand, if uh, one entrepreneur is reaching many, uh, the equipment would be expensive, but of course it will be paid for by reaching as many farmers as uh, practically possible. Uh, in terms of uh, these entrepreneurs using this equipment, um, it, you, you, you produce, the, the products come out very fast. Within an hour, you are able to say shell maize, 20 bags of maize. Within an hour, you are able to shell like 10 bags of uh, sorghum. So that already tells you how much the entrepreneurs are making and how much the farmers are saving uh, from using this kind of uh, equipment. So in, in a nutshell, what I would want to say is the entrepreneurs are making money and saving that money to pay for the equipment uh, so that they also expand to other uh, types of equipment. And I'm glad that one of the entrepreneurs is uh, with us and she's going to tell us more about how it actually happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Yes, great. We'll be really looking forward to, to, to hearing directly from them. Um, 
So Alexander, let me switch back to you because Jeffrey said something here and I um, made me think about how challenging this is. All of it is challenging, but when you're talking about addressing an issue that is particularly difficult in terms of how these young people can afford, you, you mentioned this also in your, in your first remarks, about how they can afford to actually buy these pieces of equipment um, and get those little businesses going. How, how are you solving this issue? Uh, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I, you know, clearly financing is, is always the elephant in the room and therefore it is a, is a clear part of, of our business model. I mean, first of all, the average price of a piece of equipment that, that we would tend to work with is anywhere from, let's say, you know, $600 for a maize sheller to $1,200 for a multi-crop thresher. Um, so well over what um, an average entrepreneur might have available to spend on, on a tool or on a business um, traditionally. Then if you look at what it may take for a business to be successful across multiple seasons for various crops, two to three machines may be required for the business to sustain itself. So it's certainly less expensive than you know, a larger SME business that might be $50,000 or something like that. Um, on the other hand, it's out of reach for most people. As uh, many uh, participants in this call will know, uh, most MSMEs uh, you know, are in the informal sector. Our target entrepreneurs are women and youth who have even more challenges to access credit due to lack of capital and also you know, some of the bankability requirements that they struggle to meet. So we see that banks like KCB or SACOs, MFIs and FinTechs are investing more and more in, in asset financing and trying very, um, you know, in a targeted fashion to reach more smallholder uh, businesses or businesses in smallholder markets. Our vision is to work with partners to provide technical assistance and tailored loan um, packages for them. The financing that we have tested thus far uh, to help prove concept in our one-to-many approach and to move us more in this direction with financial partners has incorporated a, a kind of a blended finance offering whereby we, Bounty Field, uh, have paid 50% of the cost of equipment and have worked with anchor partners, such as other NGOs or food buyers to provide the other 50% to purchase the tool. Our anchor partners have identified qualified MSMEs, which we then vet as, as uh, Jeffrey um, alluded to. And those MSMEs pay back the loan for the equipment in full to, um, you know, to the anchor partner. And in this way, we were able to prove concept around will farmers pay for the service? And then, you know, is there enough repayment that can actually uh, lead to a, um, a, a repayment on the loan over time. So Bounty Field does not manage the loans, our partners manage the loans and we help with the, the, the support that goes along with that. Farmers, or I should say the, the entrepreneurs can pay back between two to four seasons. And uh, we work with each entrepreneur to help them with marketing and financial management. We have a bankability checklist for them to walk through. And then, you know, when they become more bankable, they'll be ready for larger loans to formalize and expand their business. And one final point I'll make is just that all entrepreneurs with whom we have worked or who, with whom we are working or have been able to cover their operating costs and more than 60% achieve sufficient volumes and margins that would enable repayment of the capital cost of their machines within two to four seasons or one to two years. So we think that's quite promising actually, and we wanna keep building toward that, again, with third-party lenders and happy to answer any questions on that as would come in. Yeah, that's really great. Thanks so much for that answer. Some of it sounds a bit technical, Jeffrey, <laughs> but at the core of it all is really improving the lives of farmers and their families. So um, I know you hear from them regularly. You see them all the time in their homes um, and on their farms. What, what are they saying? What are they getting out of this? Wow. Um, 
I think the first thing I want to link the entrepreneurs earning something from this, and also now the, the farmers also making money uh, from using this service of uh, threshing or shelling. Mm -hmm. So from uh, what we've been able to see out in the field, um, like I remember just last year when we went visiting, some of the, uh, you could find women actually threshing manually. Uh, they are sorghum in the field with their little babies getting the dust uh, unto themselves. Uh, that is doing it manually. But through the use of equipment and spending the entire day to only uh, process like maybe a bag of 100 kilos. But uh, with the equipment, what is actually happening is um, the same women who are doing like a bag a whole day are actually able to do within an hour, uh, they've given the business to the, to the entrepreneur to provide the service they pay and with the, so their crop is ready for the market. Um, beyond that, uh, if it's going to rain, like right now it's raining in Kenya, we didn't expect any rains. Uh, and in places where the crops are ready and uh, there is equipment, within an hour you've done uh, 20 bucks. So you will have actually sold that product to the market and so that means post-harvest losses will be reduced. Um, the other thing that I've also noted uh, from what the, the, the farmers are telling us is that now with this equipment, they are able to expand the acreage on the crop. Uh, that means they will make more money from the unit area. Um, beyond that, now they are seeing an opportunity for them, especially the women to have more time uh, to do the other meetings like what they call chamas in the village uh, or do more, more useful uh, work. Uh, and so in terms of time saved, they are very happy about it. Um, a chain will tell you um, at some point about how some of the farmers have really, are really very happy about this service of uh, threshing to the point that it has made them want to grow more and it has also made them earn more to pay fees and things like that. So from the, from the farmer's perspective, I would say there is also the aspect of quality produce. Uh, to the market, like uh, to East African breweries and the like. So um, the list is no, is long. Let me stop it at that. <laughs> that's great. That's <laughs> that's what we like to hear. <laughs> so Thank you. I'm, I'm so excited now for the next session that we'll be hearing directly from Jane uh, and Beatrice, uh, who will be introduced. So you'll know who they are, but uh, couldn't get more on the ground than that. So really, really uh, are grateful that both of you were able to to come uh, and join us today so that we can all hear directly from you. So I'm gonna stop here with this and thank you both Alexandra, Jeffrey so much for sharing your insights and, and telling us about this program and, and what, what you're achieving. I feel like really we just barely scratched the surface but um, I know that we'll, we'll hear a lot more from the next panel. So um, before we go, Stevie, I think maybe if there's a question or two we might be able to take, um, I'll hand yes. it over to you. Yes, hi. Um, let's start with this first question here. Uh, does Bountifield market tool equipment to address food safety? So you want to talk a little bit about food safety? Jeffrey, do you want to do you want to jump in? Whichever. You are talking about does Bountifield do what? Does Bountifield address food safety? So I think, you know, how do we work Absolutely. with farmers and entrepreneurs on food safety? Absolutely. So um, one of the um, lead uh, partners here, Sogam Pioneer, would easily speak to that uh, in the sense that um, whatever product that is being produced uh, goes through a process. And uh, by, by the way, through the use of uh, equipment, we have crops coming from the field, it goes to the uh, store. Uh, within no time, once it's dry, it is threshed and ready for the market. So you don't have an opportunity for like uh, chicken uh, to run over it or uh, animals or things like that. So that's one aspect. And then the other aspect is of course, uh, there are tablets on which uh, the, product, the product is uh, handled. So food safety is very critical. Without, uh, that, that is one of the critical reasons why we have Mavuno Porasa program. Thank you. Great, thank you. And um, we'll just do one more right now. And there are more than that, but we'll continue the Q&A after the next panel, but um, so we can keep this moving along. 
the next question is, are farmers being able to improve the quality of their harvest and access better prices um, if selling their product? Um, in terms of quality improvement, um, one thing that you will notice is uh, like if it's uh, green grams or if it's sorghum. Sorghum is uh, like threshed and goes to East African breweries ready uh, to be marketed. So in terms of quality, yes. In terms of uh, it getting to the market and getting the right price, yes. Um, the same with green grams. When uh, you, you use the, 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 the tools we are talking of here, you get less breakage. And uh, as a result of less breakage, it means the quality is high, so you get the best price uh, for the product. So in, in a nutshell, if it's maize, the same story. If uh, it's a maize crop, the equipment that um, we've approved as bounty field, uh, kind of in terms of breakage, it's minimal. And because the breakage is minimal, it means the farmer that is going to sell the product will get the better price as opposed to a crop that has been broken into um, like uh, what I would call something close to uh, unga or uh, flour. Great, thank you. Um, with that, we're gonna hold the rest of the questions till after the next panel. Um, so I'm going to get that started here. And just, I wanna make a note as well, if any of you are joining us late, we are recording this webinar and we will uh, share that link with you all after this um, event so that you can catch up on what, what was shared before you got here. Um, the next panel, actually, I'm going to keep Jeffrey with us here. Jeffrey is going to lead the next panel. Um, today, we are thrilled to have joined with us um, two of the entrepreneurs that we work with in the field. We have Jane Kissia and Beatrice Nakaka, and I'm going to bring them in here, uh, and I'm going to have Jeffrey um, do introductions with them and to lead the next panel. And so let's see, we've got Jane and Beatrice here and I will take myself out. So I'm gonna hand it over to you, Jeffrey, um, and then just Beatrice and Jane, make sure when you're ready to talk to unmute your microphones. Thank you, Steffi, for that kind of introduction. So um, with me here is the team that actually does the work in the field. Um, so the first one uh, at the center, Chen Kisia, uh, she is uh, a retired teacher from Kisum County, uh, who has embraced farming and uh, uh, what I would call entrepreneurship to support her farmers in the village. Uh, and so when you see her here, she has mentored many. And uh, if there was enough time, she would have told us more. Uh, Chen, can you say hi? You, you unmute yourself first. Oh, sorry, you are not muted. You are still muted. That way? Can oh, you now nice, hear me? Nice, nice, Yes, very well. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening. My name is Jen Kisia. I am Jen Kisia from Kisumu County. I am an FSC, meaning Pharma Service Center, providing uh, farming services to the community farmers. Uh, thank you. You are most I'm welcome. Done so with... going... Thank you, thank you. Uh, so I also wanted to introduce... Introduct... Uh... Thank you, Jen. I also wanted to introduce uh, Beatrice Nkada, uh, who is the CEO of uh, Sogam Pioneer Agencies in Tharakanithi County, in a, vill a place called uh, Mukothima. Uh, she works with uh, one of the entrepreneurs who are, who are a youth group called uh, Mukothima Boda Boda uh, on this program. Uh, and so Beatrice, uh, can you say hi? Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Beatrice Gava, founder and director of Sogam Pioneer Agencies. We are working closely with small scale farmers. Uh, we work with over 30,000 farmers who do grow sorghum and uh, green grams. Also, we work with uh, youth and uh, women. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Beatrice. So um, I would like to uh, pose a few questions to you um, on uh, how things have progressed uh, with this Mafunobora program. Uh, and so I'll start with Chen. 
Um, and yeah. uh, so Chen, my first question to you is um, this Mafunobora project, how does it help you to work best with your farmers? Well, uh, just before I go to that, I want to say that uh, I got so interested in working with the farmers, I had to touch base with them. And uh, before I tell you how Mavuno Bora supports me, I want to tell you what made me interested in uh, actually working with uh, Mavuno Bora. I really got interested when I saw the dominance of culture that women must, must thresh grain after it is uh, ready for, for use in the homes. And I saw the women suffering with the children strapped on their backs, spending long hours to produce so little, getting very tired and very dusty and weary and earning so little out of it. So I wanted them to save time, make more money, and also reduce post-harvest losses, and also protect the women and the children from disease and have cleaner finished grain. So now I will tell you how Mavuno Bora supports me working with the farmers. Uh, Mavuno Bora got introduced to us through Cereal Growers Association, that is uh, a body that supports farmers in my area. And I think all over Kenya, CGA is known to support farmers. So Mavuno Bora uh, provides us with the uh, freshers. And uh, these are uh, sorghum freshers and maize shellers. It also helps us to have linkages with other partners. We, it, it links us with other partners. The Mavuno Bora also provides us with the linkage to get financing for uh, the treasures that we have. We just don't uh, get them from our own savings. We get them through loan because they stand in as surety for us. So after we have acquired the equipment, Mavuno Bora ensures that we get the technical support or the after sale service that we need. So the technical support is very forthcoming. And then there is also the technological linkages. The Mavuno Bora has made us link up with each other, the service providers. Uh, it has helped us form a WhatsApp group where we share our experiences, we share knowledge, and we share our challenges. And uh, it has helped us to build strong networks. It has also given us trainings, and it has therefore increased our voice and visibility in uh, working with the farmers and with other service providers. Mavuno Bora has therefore given us opportunity to market other services. Uh, like uh, it has provided us with opportunities not only doing the shelling and the threshing services, but we are also now able to sell tapulins and also hematic bags for storage. Tapolins to ensure that the product is not just spread on the floor and is not uh, secreted on by animals. And hematic bags to ensure safe storage after the product is finished. So, Mavuno Bora also facilitates us to register more farmers and it helps us to keep track of our farmers. Ah, thank so you. So I Ken. think, uh, uh, go ahead. yeah. 
it, it, it has I, really helped us. I know Jen can, uh, can speak uh, and uh, speak, but in the interest of time, I wanted you to tell us more about uh, what are your farmers sharing with you? Now that you have provided the service of uh, threshing, uh, I know you are also shelling. Uh, what are your farmers telling you? Yeah, precisely, they now tell me that their time is saved. They are able to save time. They are able to use their time to do other activities. They are able to realize more money because they have less post-harvest losses. For example, I have a, a farmer I served in Homer Hills. From the same harvest, he used to make like 60 bucks. But when I threshed for him, he made a hundred plus bucks. So he was so excited. In fact, I had uh, planned to charge him 250 shillings per bag for threshing. But after seeing that he had made 100 plus bags, he offered to pay me 300 shillings per bag for threshing his sober. So now the farmers are also now telling me that uh, they now have cleaner grain. So basically, they are tell talking more about time, economy, and cleanliness, and also uh, improved health in a nutshell. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. That is interesting. So that, that means the farmers are actually making money just like you are making uh, from offering the service. Um, yes. So I, I, I would also want to understand, you, have, you got a loan and uh, you've been able to pay. Can you tell us uh, one or two challenges that uh, you, you see uh, in uh, the loan repayment process? Yeah, I got a loan. Actually, I got an equipment uh, by way of loan. First, the equipment came quite late. When it came, we had just harvested and we had finished the manual threshing. The manual threshing had been done, so there was no grain to be threshed for a whole year until we would expect another harvest. Uh, so that was a big challenge. But notwithstanding, there was also the challenge of uh, the short period of loan repayment, 12 months. We had expected that the loan would be a 24 month issue. But when it came, we were told that it was to be paid within 12 months. So it was actually unreasonable for us. I felt it was unreasonable. Uh, another challenge that we met was that the farmers were not easily ready, were not ready to easily adopt the new technology. They had been so used to the manual threshing that they no longer wanted, they didn't uh, quite adapt it easily. And then there was also the myths attached to it that, oh, the machine will break the grain, the weevil, it will grind it, and the weevils will uh, fall like grain. And this kept away customers for quite some time. So this made us to make a lot of very many free trials just for the farmers to see. And when we were making the free trials, we were actually losing money. And then there was also the challenge of uh, transporting and uh, moving from place to place and retention of the operator with uh, these uh, underlying challenges. Oh, so I think what I've understood here is um, from your side, there are those challenges, but the good thing is you've been able to go through, uh, uh, go through them and uh, you've reached the point of being able to repay your loan. Uh, maybe one qu other question I would like to ask is, um, I see you as a very good mentor. Whenever you talk to ent other entrepreneurs, they really like it. Um, and then of course, I would like to finish with a question as what are your plans moving forward?
Did you hear my chant? It looks like she may have frozen. So um, why don't we ask the next question for Beatrice in the time being? Okay. So Beatrice. Yes. Um, now, now that um, our friend uh, is frozen, we understand technological challenges uh, from Kisumu. Uh, she can come and add more those last questions uh, when uh, we continue. So I would like you to tell us something about how you have worked with the youth group in um, uh, Mukothima and uh, how, how you have actually planned your business to grow uh, through working with this uh, rural entrepreneur by the name uh, the youth group Mukothima. Okay, thank you so much. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe it would be a good idea to start from where you thought it was nice for you to engage with us uh, on this Mafuna Pora program. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we saw some pioneer agencies working with youth. It has helped us so much because uh, with the small dressers where uh, the big machines can't reach to our farmers, the border border, team can reach wherever the farmer is. Even if it, uh, the farmer has only five bucks, uh, the, the, the border border team will be able to go up to, to where the farmer is. And also uh, with the grain quality, it has helped us uh, when we deliver sorghum to, to EAPL. Nowadays, there is no post-harvesting uh, post losses because before farmers were using the the manual way to threshing. So that time farmers couldn't uh, plant uh, more than one acre because uh, threshing was a very big challenge because uh, in a day, a woman can thresh only one bag in a day. But nowadays, uh, you can thresh up to 20, 20 bags an hour. And uh, the buyer even can come there and buy. Uh, for me, the, the group has helped me so much to aggregate more because wherever they go, I must buy that grain. Because even we give farmers a, a, a small loans, like we give them seeds, and then we uh, cut that uh, uh, loan from, from the, the, the grain. So when the farmer dresses the sorghum with the, with the, the border border team, uh, I, I, I must go there and buy that sorghum. And it has helped me to aggregate more than before. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is yes. nice to hear. So that means uh, you are aggregating more, you are getting a better quality. And uh, yes. more importantly, you are helping the very uh, uh, people, the farmers in the very remote areas that I remember yes. you saying uh, were finding it difficult to get this service of threshing. Um, yes, yes. So my other question to you is, and of course I can hear you are saying you have increased the volumes you are supplying uh, to yes. East African uh, breweries. So maybe yes. uh, one question I would ask you is, what challenges have you seen? Uh, challenges I, 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 I've seen in my area. Uh, now that the, uh, we have many farmers who, have, who we have not reached with the machines. We have mm -hmm. very few machines and we would like to have more machinery because the, the market is there and the farmers, they are now the, as they know, there are uh, machineries to dress. They are interested to, 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 to open more land so that we can uh, do a lot of sorghum because uh, the market is there even if we have never reached their targets. That's the challenges we have for now. Even I would like to work closely with only not the groups. I would even like to work with individuals because the area is too large for, for, for us to grow a lot of soga. So what, what I'm hearing you say is uh, moving forward, you are thinking of uh, engaging more uh, village entrepreneurs uh, to yes. help you provide this service to more farmers. Yes. Um, can you tell us more about uh, what, what you think this is going to require? Uh, it's uh, to, to, to have more machines, 
mm -hmm. uh, to get, uh, if we as the farmers, we can get uh, financed, mm -hmm. uh, it will, it will be, be able for us to, 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 to pay because the market is there. Oh, great. So that is to say from your perspective, you see Sogam Pioneer working with many small village entrepreneurs to provide this service as you aggregate. Yes. Wow, that is nice. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I think uh, from, and from, from your perspective, um, would you say you've seen a difference uh, between what Mavuno Bora has brought, uh, uh, yeah, when you see it now and before, you can say there is a difference in how much your business has grown. Yes, uh, it has grown a lot. Also, it has impacted many youths, like the ones in Boda Boda doing that business. Uh, they get something to, to, to educate their children. You will meet some of the group members of that Boda Boda. They have bought cows. They manage to buy uh, uh, land. Uh, they are educating their children. And you can see nowadays youth, they don't have uh, work to do. Now with the machines, they are very happy because like now they know in the next two weeks, they will be, be able to get work to do with the pressure. So the impact is there and the business have grown. Because even if I'm here in my office, I will only receive a call, business we are dressed, that box or 40 bucks said the car, the car to come and collect. And my business have grown like uh, 99% even to KBL. Uh, they, 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 they say that the quality is now good than before. Oh, great. Uh, thank yes. you so much, uh, Beatrice, for, for those uh, remarks. I would have wished to have Chen around, but uh, Chen, you are around. Um, I think she has a challenge with network. Um, Stevie. Yes. Hi. You yes. know, as, as, as we can continue and not finish, uh, because <laughs> we are talking from the village where the action is taking place. But I think from what you have so far heard from Eastern Kenya, where it's uh, very dry, but still they're able to produce crops. Uh, farmers are making money, entrepreneurs are making money, and the company that is supporting them uh, through our program is also making money. Um, so I think I would have wanted to talk more, but I would want to hand over the uh, discussion to you uh, so that you take us to the next level. Yes, so um, thank you, Jeffrey, for this panel. Um, I uh, will go through a couple more questions. I'm actually going to bring all the panelists back in so we can move on to the final Q&A. Um, let me bring you all back in here. All right. And so let's go through to try to get through as many of these as we can. Um, so this first question, uh, what measures do you put in place to ensure the quality of equipment is not compromised as there is a lot of substandard equipment in the country due to use of low quality material by fabricators? So I think part of this question is going back to the first panel on that um, pillar on technology and, and what's that really that criteria on how we're assessing the technology? Okay, so, um, go ahead, Jeffrey. I wanted to say it this way that within Bountyfield on Mafuno Bora project, we have an engineer and uh, we have protocols that we follow um, to assess the equipment and uh, the equipment has to tick the boxes uh, in terms of how much it's able to produce uh, per hour, the quality that comes out of it, is it able to um, thresh or shell a particular commodity that it said it's supposed to uh, uh, thresh? Uh, and so we, we have all those parameters that we take through. Uh, and of course, even when the equipment is in the field, it is followed to be checked as to how it's working. Uh, if there is a challenge, we engage with the supplier to make sure that uh, it's either resolved or it is not resolved, we have it exchanged. Great, thank you for that answer. Um, all right, so the next question um, that we have, uh, does the entrepreneur do all the threshing by 
her himself or does the farmer help out with that process? So if we could just kind of talk a little bit more about how that fee for service model really works. I've wished uh, someone else answer, but I, I can answer because I'm with this. Uh, Beatrice? Yeah, Beatrice. Yes. Sorry? Yes, Beatrice. So we had a question, the question here from the, the audience of um, whether or not the entrepreneurs do all the threshing themselves or if the farmer helps out with that process. And so I think this question really gets to the understanding of how that fee for service model works. So if you want to talk a little bit about how that works with the customer of the farmer and how the threshing is actually done. So the question you've asked, Jen, are you here? I'm there, but I don't know if you are hearing me. Yeah, you, I'm hearing you very well. So the question is uh, that is being asked here is um, when you go to provide the threshing service to your neighbor, Yes. Is it only is it only you who goes with the equipment and you thresh, or how do you go about it? Oh no, it's not only me. It's uh, first there is the transporter, then there is the operator, then there is me following uh, after them. So that is how we usually package ourselves. The operator the machine owner and the transporter. Uh, and the, uh, the, yeah. the other question they had was whether the farmer that you are going to thresh for helps you in any way. Yes, the farmer helps. Usually the farmer provides uh, helping hands uh, because uh, the machine works very, very fast. So the three of us, us can actually not accomplish the work with the speed that we would wish. So the farmer usually organizes for other three or four fellows to be collecting the grain and bringing close to the machine. The farmer also helps in making sure that the product that we are going to thresh or shell is actually dry. It, because we only work with very, very dry. Uh, so I have to go ahead before the threshing day to ensure that the grain is very, very dry so that we don't have a, a transport wastage. Thank so you, the, the farmer helps us. Yes. Okay. Great. Yes. So I'm just going through some of the other questions here. Um, one other question here, how are the entrepreneurs working with Bonifield edge out similar competitors um, while trying to make money? Um, do they also have to be cheaper for the farmers to access? So this question I think goes to, are there other service providers um, like our entrepreneurs out there that might be competing with other um, providers who have different kinds of technologies? Jen, can you answer that one? Yes. Whether they are competitors uh, out there. Yes. Uh, there, there are not very many competitors. I want to say that uh, this is a field that is uh, fairly new to our people, especially the sorghum thresher. The sorghum thresher is a new technology around. So we are enjoying being uh, alone with it, but we are not uh, misusing the monopoly. So it is a challenge. The monopoly is actually a challenge because we are the only one around here. For example, in Kisumu, I am the only one. Uh, there are maize shellers that compete with us and they charge fairly lower than what we charge. But the farmers still prefer us because our final product is actually better. We are using superior machines. So yes, there are competitors, but we ensure that the price is actually, what we charge is affordable and the farmers are able to pay. Thank you, Thank you. Jane, for that answer. Um, I need to wrap up this webinar today. It is 11 o'clock already. Um, time certainly does fly when you're having a good time and learning some new insights. 
So thank you all, every one of you for being here today um, and uh, bringing Bernard back here so we can thank you as well for your support of Mabuna Bora um, and for being with us as well. Um, I know there's lots of other questions that we didn't get to. I will kind of review those afterwards as well and see if there's anything else that we can maybe respond to when I send out the link and just add some more information. We do also, if you visit our website, uh, we do have a couple of white papers on the Mavuna Bora program that we have um, published. And so you'll be able to access that with a lot more information about the program. I'll just pop that link real quick into the chat and um, that's it. So again, I just want to thank you all for spending this hour with us today. And I hope you all enjoyed it. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your days. Thank you all for participating on the panel. Thank, thank you. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you.